Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another video for Eve Echoes. Now I'm sure you're aware there is a war going on in void space at the moment, so me going out and ratting and doing testing and things like that, it's kind of being eaten up by me turning up to CTAs. Now when I turn up to a CTA in game, just so you're aware, you won't ever see Silent Rose or Captain Benzie, there's been so many times in the past where I've turned up like that, you do your however many jumps, you get into position, the FC says, oh, we already you jump into the fight and i'm dead before it even starts because of course everyone's after a captain benzie kill mail even when they say they aren't i am always the first person to get alfred so i turn up to ctas on alts so i've probably been on those battlefields you just have no idea who i am Anyway, in amongst all of this, we've just had Verge of Silence relaunch into the game, so that's what I want to take today's video as a brief moment to take a look at. Has anything changed? Is anything better? Um, how is it all working? We're going to have a look at Verge of Silence, what it is, how it works, and why you might want to do it, and give it kind of the review treatment, I guess. So if you do enjoy this video, let me know in the comment section down below, and while you're down there, slap that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. If you do want to go the extra mile to help keep this channel going and support the content that I create, you can do so by heading across to patreon.com forward slash Captain Benzie. Every pledge, every dollar means the world to me and it really helps keep this channel afloat. Thank you all so much. Anyway, that said and done then, let's talk about Verge of Silence. And you might be asking, why is Benzie in a Bantam 2? Why not? It's not like I ever get to actually undock the thing, so I may as well spin it for a ship intro every now and then. So Verge of Silence, we need to go into our event tab to access this, and here it is right at the top. Now there are two types of system you can go to, a safe system and a perilous system. There are multiple perilous systems, um, and these are the PvP enabled ones. Safe systems on the other hand, they basically have mining and they have ratting options there, and it's like being in high sec, you can't shoot anyone else. Perilous systems, on the other hand, you have a kind of king of the hill scenario where you want to be within 10 kilometers of the central beacon and that will start accruing you points, um, but you can be destroyed by anyone else around there. Now, I've, <laughs> I've done this a couple of times on my ult. I've got everything I wanted to on this particular character. I've gone in on one of my ults because there are a couple of bits and pieces I thought, oh, that could be cool to grab. It is exactly the same as the last Verge of Silence event, which means to say the safe system is boring as all hell. If you want to go mining in the safe system, you're going to warp in, you're going to jump yourself to an asteroid belt, you're going to get three seconds of mining before all of the asteroids are gone because there's 30 other people in system doing the same thing. You'll sit there for a few minutes until the next belt spawns, you'll jump through with the other 30 people, and that belt will be empty in seconds again. This is how it goes, and it's very much the same for the ratting experience. You can go in there and you can shoot some sleepers, which is pretty cool. It's a nice way to get to see the sleeper models if you're not able to fly into dormant realms but again you'll find that basically you warp in you lock on everything's dead next wave spawns you lock on and everything's pretty much dead again you might get a hit or two in that's about it the safe system is disappointing as all hell once again. The perilous system, on the other hand, if you warp into that, yes, you can get your points for standing next to one of those beacons. Parking yourself next to a beacon will accrue you points. However, there are going to be other people parked next to those beacons as well, and just like last time, they are primarily camped by people in capitals. It's nice to see people with capitals are getting to dust them off in something other than the occasional call to arms, but for everyone else, it sucks the big one. Once again, the best way to get points in this, if there is something you want, and we'll come to that in just a moment, is to go into the perilous systems with a covert ops cloaking ship. Warp in to one of the beacons at about 13 kilometers whilst cloaked, then approach and park yourself under the cover of a covert ops cloak, and then just sit there, put your phone on the table while you eat dinner or do literally anything else, um, because yeah, it's boring as all hell. Now, there is a certain point to be said for this. I could be being a little bit unfair here. On one hand, this is an excellent use, uh, an excellent tool for learning how to use a covert ops ship to fly through gate camps. So for that, if you have a covert ops cloaked ship, get out there, give it a try. Whether it's a Wreath 2, whether it's just a covert ops frigate, whether it's a standard stealth bomber, buy one off the market dirt cheap. Just put a single covert ops cloak on it. Don't bother with rigs, don't bother with weapons or mid slots or anything, just the covert ops cloak and learn to pilot yourself through gate camps. 
it's a cool learning educational experience for that. Otherwise, you're probably going to want a fleet of friends to jump in, try and take one of these points for yourself, and just sit there and fight. And for that, it can be good fun. This is the kind of experience that people have been asking for since the original Crimson Harvest event. A reason to team up with friends, jump into an environment, um, and work together in a sort of safe PvP environment. Because it is safe. If you get your ship destroyed, you just get it back afterwards. It's not permanent at all. It's, you know, you get destroyed and then you reappear back at the station you were docked at beforehand and you just go again. You can even jump straight back into the last room by using the go to last system button on the right hand side. And again, for that, it may be fun. If you've got some friends in capitals who are happy to park there, if you're communicating with your alliance, you can jump in, you can probably have one of these rooms to yourselves, and you just blap anyone that comes nearby. I've seen a lot of people flying things like succubuses in there. Um, great way to, you know, sit there next to dreads and just make sure that there's something there that can take out. I've had a little bit of fun of PvP in there, but really nothing overly exciting. Now on the subject of not overly exciting, let's go to the store and talk about what the rewards for the Verge of Silence event this time are, because yeah, they're not exactly great either. Let's take a look. So we have 20,000 free skill points for a thousand of the uh, points. I forget what they're called, general units or something like that. Um, and ultimately you can buy this five times. So if you can get yourself 5,000 interstellar tokens, that's what they're called, that's gonna get you 100,000 skill points. It's not particularly much this late in the game, but it can be nice to have, and it may just be worth doing just to give yourself that little bit of a shorter skill training time on whatever you're working on. Oh boy, yeah, I, I know that feeling. I know that feeling of wanting my skill training times to be a little bit shorter. But hey, 100,000 is... Uh, it's nice, but it's not a ton. Fortunately, 5,000 interstellar tokens isn't particularly hard to get. Next up, we have Lazarus units. Now, 50,000 Lazarus units will cost 500 interstellar tokens. And again, this stacks up to 10 times. So for 5,000 interstellar tokens, you can get yourself you know, 500,000 worth of Lazarus units for some respecking, if that's what you want to do. It works out, you know, it's better than getting the skill points if you've already got the skill points and you just want to reassign them to something else. There are loyalty points, again, up for grabs, a maximum of 200,000 loyalty points for, again, in this case, um, 1,000 LP. This is kind of the dump one that if you've just got some LP left over, you can dump it into loyalty points. If you fancy getting yourself some drones or something like that, I don't know. And an offense nano material supply, 500 interstellar credits. You can buy these up to 10 times. These are your, basically, your, uh, your, nanocore training materials they are all offensive ones they're combat ones only so for me with my probe explorer wanting to get that up a little bit higher on its nanocore yeah there's nothing here i can do no industrial core nothing like that no defensive core just the combat ones so mm, again limited in scope we then have crawler depth and genesis neural compilers if you're working with implants um these are again it's an easy-ish way to get those they're clone bound you can't sell them of course that's what that little icon there is um but yeah it's if you need them they're there i guess Probably the most exciting thing for me here is the Capsuleer Easter Egg skin. This is a really cool skin, and it's actually the one I'm using on Benzi, even though I've got some of the really cool older ones. Now, you may say that doesn't really look like much. It's just a blue capsule skin with some nice white and green highlights. This one changes color. Every time you destroy your pod or your pod gets destroyed, it will come back. So sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's green, sometimes it's sort of a reddish pinky color. There's all kinds of different colors this can come back at. And it's really quite cool for 8,000 interstellar tokens. It's a nice little thing if you missed out on it during the hunt earlier this year. Next up, a Procura Mining Masters Emblem. Yay! So your new Tech 8 Procurer can get a cool skin for it for the brief period that you're Tech 8 before going into Tech 9 and getting yourself a Coveter, then having a Coveter 2 later on. It's a skin. I still think that skins should be given either as packs or as uh, kind of like nano cores that can go on everything. So I think this should have been a pack if you'd given me Retriever, Procurer, and Coveter skins, including the Coveter 2, and made it 10,000 interstellar tokens. That would have been much more exciting, and I think a lot more people would have been in on that. Um, it's a cool skin, I'm not gonna lie. It's an interesting skin. It's not all that different from the base Coveter, but a skin's a skin, right? And if you are using a Coveter, it could be a fun little skin for you. Finally then, we have the Neon Gas Destroyer Crate. And 
this would be more interesting to me were it not for a certain case of situations. Now, last time around, it was the Neon Gas Frigate Nanocore Opt Box, which gave you the options of the Stealth Bombers or the Explorer Frigates. And I chose for the Stealth Bomber at the time. I got the Hound one, so my Hound 3 would have a bit better explosion velocity on it. And I was trying to see if that would make the Hound 3 actually useful. Um, spoiler alert, no, it's still a trash ship um, and utterly pointless, even with the Nanocore. But I then wanted to get it again for the Probe Explorer. That didn't work out for me because you can only buy one at a time. Again, it is limited to one time. It's 25,000 interstellar credits and you can only purchase one of these. So if you do go for this, you need to make it count. Obviously, I did get the Probe Cover Ops one later on. Now, this applies to all of the different destroyer body types in the game. The Dragoon, the Korax, the Algos, the Talwar, the Cormorant, the Thrasher, the Catalyst and the Coercer. All of them are here, and interestingly enough, the Thrasher Neon Gas, well, all of these Neon Gas are combat ones. They are not interdictor ones, so if, like me, you have, say, a Thrasher 3 interdictor, and you want to use it for combat, this is the way you do it. 18% cannon damage is pretty good. 22.5% shield, 21% flight velocity, not bad either. That does help its speed tank quite well. You get either stasis webifier range, warp disruptor optimal range, or interdiction sphere launch disruption, blah, 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 all of that there. Yep, field range there. You can go for cannon damage again, or afterburner or warp drive capacitor need. I'd go uh, cannon damage. You've got things like your interdiction sphere again, your shield, shield boost, shield. What I'm trying to say is these are actually pretty good cores, and they work for both an interdictor or a combat variant of the ship. So if you miss the concept of having a Thrasher Covert Ops, and you wanted just a Thrasher that can do more damage, Damage and you don't really care about the interdictor, this core got you covered. This core will do remarkably well with that. Um, you can fit it for straight up damage, you can fit it defensively, you can fit it all kinds of ways. And if you are using a interdictor destroyer, then you can fit it for interdiction capabilities as well. It's a pretty sweet core. That then works for the top as well, like the Talwar. I do occasionally fly a Talwar to Assault, or did before I skilled out of most of my destroyer skills because they were useless. But 18% missile torpedo damage is nothing to sniff at. Flight velocity, again, is remarkably good on an Assault destroyer. Then those other bits, we've got like Command Burst Fuel Consumption, can be really useful if you want to put this on, say, the Talwar Command and things like that. Um, Afterburner and Warp Drive Speed Increase is a really nice skill if you want to be going for the Assault variant. Shield, Shield Boost to Shield Boost Amount or Command Burst Effective Range. Missile Torpedo Damage, Explosion Velocity or Flight Velocity. At this point, I'd go for the Torpedo Damage just for straight up DPS numbers there. Afterburner capacitor need, warp drive capacitor need, fuel consumption or burst effective range for your bursts. Again, this gives you the variety to make this a Talwar Assault Core or a Talwar Command Core, which is really cool that you get both of those options. Warp speed again, activate the Sun Chaser system is really nice. It takes you a long time to get down to that point, but could be useful if that's what you're looking for. That's kind of like its own private jump drive and um, that doesn't require sinusural fields. Warp speed or capacitor, missile torpedo damage at the bottom there up to 10.8%. This is a really nice core if you want to max it out. Although I don't think anyone's going to be getting a destroyer core and maxing it out. Like I genuinely don't think anyone, I think maxing out a nano core is a rare thing anyway, but on a destroyer, that's super rare, like maxing it out for a battleship or a carrier or maybe even a battlecruiser or a frigate, sure. Cruisers and destroyers, not so much. Not many people are gonna be maxing those out. Destroyers are at the bottom of the list here. So little content for them. And that's a shame because I think actually with like a fully maxed out Talwar nano core and neon gas core here, the Talwar 2 Assault could be a fearful creature. Even in PvE, I reckon, if I can be bothered, I might grind out the 25,000 points, jump in a Talwar, uh, uh, equip this to it, train up the Destroyer skills again, Destroyer Command. I think there's no Destroyer Command I'm, and de uh, Defense that I'm missing. I've got Engineering still because it helps frigates and stuff like that, so I might train those back up instead of Capital skills, but hey, who knows. Um, I think that could be a lot of fun, jumping into a Talwar or an Algos or a Korax or a Dragoon Assault two and just having fun with those. I really reckon that could be a fun way to go, although it is going to be IP intensive. Now for me, you might be saying, hang on, Benzie, are you really turning down a Thrasher core? No, I wouldn't be turning it down. I've already got this core, which is why it doesn't really interest me all that much to go through it. The Talwar Neon Gas, maybe. Maybe I will. I don't know. Maybe I will, you know, reskill back in Destroyers, grab that Neon Gas core, and who knows, maybe one day I'll do a video telling you how awful that all went. 
The bottom line here, though, is if I'm being completely honest, I'm kind of glad that Verge of Silence is back. It's a surprisingly cool event if you engage with it properly. If you go in with a fleet, it can be great fun. If you go in using it as a covert ops training tool, it's awesome. The rewards just feel a little bit lackluster this time. I don't know. I think the you know the previous rewards were just that little bit better. Dare I say, I think there could have been more versatility, more variety on display here. It's not awful. It's not awful, and you know what? At least it's not pay to win. Oh, wait. Is it? Hmm. Hmm. Where were you hiding? Are you under regular sales? I can't remember where it's gone, but there was somewhere I'm sure I saw the Interstellar credits were being sold as a separate piece as well. So if you don't want to grind them, you could just buy them. I might be talking out my backside right now. Give me a sec. Exchange store. Concord Pass store. No, it looks like they may have taken that out. I don't know, it might have been something else I was remembering. So yeah, it looks like at least that is, you know, active there. I don't know, Verge of Silence, I don't think it's awful. I really don't think it's awful. I just think it could, could have been so much better if they'd bothered to kind of just take the lessons that should have been learned from last time and acted upon them, but they haven't. They've just rolled out the exact same event as last time with the exact same issues as last time. In fact, the only thing that's changed is the loot, which isn't as good as last time, in my opinion. Well, okay, maybe, maybe you like the implant stuff. Maybe the destroyer crate's better for you than the frigate crate was. Maybe it's worth getting the pod skin, if nothing else. But I just, I don't know. It feels like they did Verge of Silence pretty much the same as before, but less inspired than it would have been if they'd just done it exactly the same as before. And that feels really weird to say. But anyway... My thoughts and opinions are just that, my own thoughts and opinions. You guys surely have your own. Let me know in the comments section down below. Are you taking part in Verge of Silence? Or are you too busy defending or attacking Void Space at the moment? Or are you just not bothered by Verge of Silence at all? What do you think could have made it more exciting? Or is it really exciting for you as it stands? Let me know your opinions in the comments. Remember, one of my comments each week wins a month of Combo Omega, so it's worth dropping it down there. Otherwise, thank you for watching, folks. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.